helped NFC help an amazing number of animals. But the actions of humans are still leading to animals being taken out of their environment and made to live difficult lives. Be it in the medical industry, cosmetic industry, through illegal pet trade or mistreatment. In Denmark, these animals have found a safe haven. The charity for Nordic Fascon at Home 2021 is Oseret Zoo Rescue. They provide a comfortable environment where these animals can retire and enjoy their lives. Together, we can help the rescue zoo take care of these animals and give them the future they deserve. Let's hear a bit more about Oseret Zoo Rescue and why it's so important from Nico. Hi, I'm Nico and welcome to the first zoo and rescue center for exotic animals in Denmark and also my home. And today I'm gonna tell the story about how I grew up in a rescue zoo. 20 years ago, my parents bought a zoo in Denmark and converted it into a rescue zoo instead. So that means we take in animals who had a hard life one way or another. It could be from the medical industry, cosmetic industry, or private people obtaining illegal exotic animals. You can see this as a retirement home for all the animals who had a hard life one way or another. Unfortunately, we lost my dad to cancer here a few years ago. I was out on my own working as a game developer, but I quickly moved home again to the rescue zoo to help out my mother and the 600 animals living here. One of the ways that I'm helping out is that I'm live streaming our everyday life and I'm developing a game called Rescue Wars Online and 100% of the profit is going to help all the rescue animals. Every cent Swedish crown and penny you donate will help Oseret Zoo Rescue look after the hundreds of animals there. Thanks Nico for everything you're doing to take care of them. Alright! Hello! Hello, 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 good morning! Early podcast! Earlier podcast than normal Yodin! Um, episode 59, is the stream still happening? Yes. 
Good morning. <laughs> um, you guys may have recognized uh, Nico from that video. Um, we are speaking with him again. He It's been a while since he's been on the podcast. But the podcast today is with Nico um, from Play Rescue. They have a great Twitch channel. Um, they're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. You can do command guest uh, to... Uh, to, to get to those socials. Koopa Steve donated $77.77. Dars tipped $5. Um, and Cal tipped $20. And Voyage tipped $10. Thank you so much. Um, those those donations are going directly uh, to Play Rescue today. Um, their, their PayPal is linked up to mine. So just so you know, that's where those donations are going. Again, you saw it in the video, but it is a rescue zoo in Denmark. Um, they are home to over 600 animals, over 120 species they have there. And today we're going to do something similar to what we did last time. We're hooked into Nico's RTMP, um, so we'll, we'll be able to see a little bit of a zoo tour there. Um, hopefully follow their keepers around and, and get to talk to Nico at the same time. You guys can still ask questions. Um, I will be on call with him. Um, Emla, thank you for the 10. Danza with the 25, thank you. Um, I read an article this morning that said the operating expenses of this facility are around 45K per month. That's USD per month. Um, it is a mammoth operation, uh, so your donations help a lot. Spiderland, thank you for the 10. Warber, thank you for the 20. $177.77. Thanks to Koopa Steve. Okay. Um, what am I missing? There will be a quiz at the end of this podcast. Um, like always, because Chuck is up at 7 a.m. Uh, to write our quiz for us. Sydney, thank you for the 10. Um, Riz, what's good? Thank you. Um, so, quiz is based off of my conversation with Nico. Um, it won't be it won't be anything crazy if you've been here before. It's just based on the conversation. You don't have to know anything anything beyond that. Do my thank you for the ten dollars. If you win the quiz by getting the most answers right the fastest, uh, then you get a gifted sub to my channel. If you're not already subbed, and if you are already subbed, then I will gift you a channel elsewhere on Twitch, or you can ask me to donate an additional five dollars today to our organization. It is multiple choice. Um, nothing planned up to the podcast. I, I'm flying Ori for the last time today, but I'm bringing Matt out with me, so I'm not going to stream it. Doomer, thank you for the ten dollars. Um, and I think that's it. If you have a question, you can use the ask bot. You can do hashtag ask followed by your question. Um, Dongo, thank you. Um, that I I'm not able to help you with right now, but um, you're welcome to to look up make wish online and, and see if uh see if your niece is eligible looped with a hundred and fifty dollars thank you so much okay amazing um 362 dollars and 77 cents again if you have a question hashtag ask um followed by your question i will see it i will be back in a second with nico am i missing anything i am not going to do a poll today because it's not species specific um can you guys believe we're at 59 episodes? Next week is 60 episodes. That's crazy. Hello. Hello. No poll, big time. All right, I think we're gonna be good to go. Um, all right, I'll be back with Nico in a second. Good morning. Podcast time. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. Hi guys. 
All right, let's see if this works. Uh, Fur, thank you for the $20 tip and zero with the $5. Um, we are almost set. Your RTMP is working. Nico, how are you? I'm good. Good. Are we even going to get started before the goal has been reached? <laughs> I know. We're at $387.77. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, I think a lot of the people here remember you. Um, but at this point, if you want to reintroduce yourself, because it's been a while since you've been here, that'd be great. Was it, was it like the fifth episode you did? or Something, something like that. Third? Yeah. Something like that. I'm happy to be back. It, it kind of should have been the 60th then if I was one of the first, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, well, uh, I don't know if you guys maybe saw the video or just came in here, but my name is Nico and uh, I live stream from a channel called Play Rescue. We have a rescue zoo that my parents bought 20 years ago and converted. Well, first we were a zoo, but then we sort of changed our ways very quickly and became a rescue zoo instead. So we take in animals that had a hard life one way or another and uh, have one of our, our our friends here in the rescue, Sue Ayo, here behind me. Yay! If she want to talk with yes, we Did you guys her. see her or yes. did she just like go into the background? <laughs> no, I couldn't see her, but I remember her from last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi, Ayo. <laughs> Well, um, so many of our animals, they can come from, like Ayo, uh -huh. private people obtaining exotic animals, sometimes illegal, sometimes just because people don't understand how old birds get, and it's not always a great pet if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I could imagine you also might have talked about before, Maya. For sure, yes. Um, but yeah, medical industry, pi private people obtaining illegal exotic animals, so just animals they can't take care of, or like our newest endeavors, the fur farm foxes, because... Thank God it is becoming illegal here in Denmark to use foxes for fur. So we recently rescued a group of foxes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I have basically, I've been out on my own. I, I grew up here in the rescue zoo, but because unfortunately we lost my dad to cancer, I came home again to help out my mother and the 600 animals here. And one of the ways that I'm helping out is that I am live streaming and I am showing off our work here with the rescue animals. Right. And uh, I'm developing a game called Rescue Wars Online, where you're part of the rescue team and you go on rescue missions and you fight off evil and you rescue animals and you sort of, together with the stream community, are building your own little rescue city and uh, then 100% of the profit is going directly to help the rescue animals. Yeah, that's and, uh, awesome. Yeah. That's such a cool idea. And then also you guys have a Twitch channel. You guys can do Command Guest or Command Org. I think they'll both take you uh, to those, but they're, they're Twitter, they're Instagram and uh, Twitch channel as well. So you can find all that there. Um, remind me how many foxes you guys rescued. I know it was a group of them. So we rescued, we well, initially we rescued four, but of, unfortunately we lost one of them and that's what happens in these rescue situations. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stress involved in it. And these guys, they were going in um, the most confined spaces that you can think of. You. You, you might be able to see it still here when you when when we go out and and and, and see them that their feet are uh, they're standing a little funny mm -hmm. and it's because they've been in so small confined spaces that they couldn't move that when they came here to the rescue zoo they have actually never ever used their legs before yeah which is just Jeez. crazy I think we saw um, that briefly in that video that they that they made for you guys. Um, yeah, yeah, in the start there, you could kind of see, and those cages you saw in the start of the video were actually not the ones they went in. There was just the ones when they came here. Oh, they were geez. smaller than the ones they, and there are three thousand foxes at the farm. Still. So oh yeah, gosh. I mean, the reason why we took them, well, you could, <laughs> you can look at this like this. We we of of course we couldn't take three thousand foxes of because course. that that wouldn't be good for anybody involved here basically we would just be creating the same problem one more time mm -hmm. but what we could do was we can go in and we could rescue how many we could and what we could make a good enclosure for and we could use them as ambassador of telling and showing people why it should stay illegal and why and what you're buying right. uh, when you buy a fur basically yeah absolutely we're all about we're all about that here we've, we've talked about that lots of times they're familiar with that mm. conversation um, that doesn't surprise me, Maya. Not at all. <laughs> we do have that conversation a lot on this stream, but that's great. Um, okay, what else do I? So we'll have some questions come through while while we're walking around and and chatting and and all that. So I'll ask you those questions um, as they come through. Tipsy tipped fifty dollars. Hmm? Thank you so much. So we're at four hundred and thirty-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Um, Holy moly! 
and yeah so how do you how do you want to anonymous with twenty dollars thank you so much where would you like that's to start? so great like do you have to go out there and grab your backpack or is someone else going to be walking around with the backpack or what's the plan um no i think the way we're going to do it is i'm going to switch over to headset and then you can switch over to the outdoor stream then we can still talk until i get to the backpack okay we see um... the backpack right now um but we also see okay. you so all right, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> what is her story again? Um, I don't know if you can tell. I don't get angry. Uh, can you tell that her oh, beak? Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's like, ow. <laughs> yeah, she does not want to show it right now. <laughs> but she lost half of her beak, and I believe it was maybe in some kind of accident, accident with a different bird or. Again, when we when you have 600 animals, the individual stories, and, and because we work more or less like a retirement home, you can say, because it's, it's very old animals, so there's a lot of changing. It's it's a lot of giving some animals a good... And now she pooped. <laughs> it's a lot about giving the animals a good few years left. Right. So my point is it's hard to know all of the stories mm -hmm. all, the, all the time. All right, let's see here. Um... Is the two lynxes, are they coming up and saying hi to you guys? I've, we've seen them running around in the back. There's a little bit of water okay. on your camera now, though, so it's a little blurry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. Not, like, anything bad. I think it's just a couple drops on your lens. Okay. Right, so we're going to do... We, we are going to hear some change here. Obviously, I'm going over to headset, mm -hmm. so I hope it's not going to be too bad for you guys. Um, let's see. All right, I'm going to try to change over. Okay. Chat, have you guys seen the lynxes? On the test call, I thought they were bobcats, which is wrong. They look very similar. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear you, I think. I hope <laughs> <laughs> we can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can too. Every single morning yes, at five a.m. <laughs> I'm sure. Are you happy? <laughs> All right, I think I am good to go here. Okay, perfect. You guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Right, I'm gonna jump outside. Well. I don't know if they are coming up, but the two beautiful lynxes you're looking at, mm -hmm. they are called Luna and Nayla. Luna and Nayla were rescued from a zoo where they were forcefully removed. They were going in a one-by-one one meter enclosure. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, as, as, as my understanding was that also the zoo wanted to, you know, give them better. They just couldn't. Mm -hmm. But... But yeah, the two lynxes here again is is what is known as as you know taking over from other zoos. What we also do, the reason why we sort of stayed to be, our main focus is obviously rescue, but we are still is mixed. Match. Like if we sometimes have an animal sitting alone, we can still call up and talk with other zoos to hear you guys have animals that might be sitting alone. We can mix and match and give them good lives. Right. Um, and that's sort of why we have stayed both things. Got it. Sorry, but these too... two, these two came together. Yeah. yeah, these two are sisters, and then came together, oh, okay. and and then got this huge new enclosure. There's um, as a funny story about we always tend to hear in the stream that people always think that bigger enclosure are always better. Mm -hmm. But when you're when you're talking rescue animals that have been sitting in these small confined spaces for some of them maybe 15 years, it's actually one of the most stressful experience for the animals getting you know, bigger and bigger and bigger and closer. So it's about small steps all the time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think it's beginning to rain. Oh no. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to save my box here. All right. Major, thank you for the $20 donation. $477.77. That's great. We you cut out there. If 
you're still able to hear me, we can't hear you right now. I don't know if maybe you like left Wi-Fi or something if you're on mobile. Thank you for the five dollars. lost it. Chat again, if you have any questions um, while we're walking around the zoo here, you can do um, command ask or exclamation point ask for instructions um, on how to do it, but it's just hashtag ask followed by your question. Are you back? Uh, Hi. Sorry, I don't know what happened with the connection. That's okay. If you're on Wi-Fi, it kind of sounds like you just walked out of the area. Oh, oh yeah, that might be it. Oh, wow, that's wet. All right. Here we are, people. Okay. So, Chad, there is a Jesus little bit, Christ. there's a bit of a delay with the, uh, with the RTMP, um, but. Oh, yeah, so I haven't actually picked you guys up yet. <laughs> no, now, now we're picked up, <laughs> so we're good. All right. <laughs> we know the future. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Uh -huh. You guys maybe remember Alex, yes. our head keeper? Oh, no, it's raining. I know. It's such a rainy day. Like, if, if, give us... 15, 20 days, it's beginning to look like a summer rescue too. <laughs> Would you mind wiping the lens a little bit? Because there's water like in the middle of it. Vit, thank you oh, for yeah. $80, Leonard with $20. $80 and $20. How much? Oh, oh, almost the 500 already? We passed 500. We're at 582 now. That's wonderful. Oh, okay. Your lens looks awesome now. Nice. I actually had a few. I had a few streams with a lens that are all dirty because of a gibbon monkey who were licking it, and nobody told me. So I was walking around with no chat available, oh, and it was just all covered up in smush from a gibbon. <laughs> oh no! Oh, we're actually looking at uh, the new uh, fox enclosure. Oh great! They've been digging out. Yeah, I think they just did this today. That's awesome. So Alex, what are we? Uh, what are we doing? Rescue. Yeah. Visit Boris, the uh, Red Ruffed Vari. Do you say Vari in English? <laughs> Red Ruffed Lemur, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know that, Maya? Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've worked with Red Ruffed Lemurs and Black and White Ruffed Lemurs. Mm. In Danish, it's because I think they're called Varis. Maybe it'd be the Latin name that we use. I don't know. We have a, a couple questions that have come through, hard questions. Three different people yeah? have asked, what is your favorite animal? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Favorite animal? Sorry, guys. The only reason why... We moved a bit. We have a, a lot of uh, meat-eating animals, and, and we have just been told by Twitch that we need to move everything. So that's why we did that. <laughs> just so you know. All right. Uh, favorite animal. The one question that I simply will not ask at, uh, reply to at any point. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. No, we, I think it's the most asked question of all time. Yeah, I bet. We did a... This weekend I did a stream with, uh, it's a furry convention that asked if they could raise money for us. The video you guys saw on the start is from that convention. Oh, really? And they kept on, yeah, they kept on asking and asking and asking, but it has something to do with that apparently you have a personality in that community. And I apparently said, I, I, well, I guess I like foxes and cats. So now I've been getting concept art of foxes and cats all week. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. I didn't realize that that's what that was. Um, well, mm. that's good, though. I mean, cool fundraiser, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be a more perfect, uh, what do you say, match of a community in, in the sense of people liking animals so much yes. that they like, you know, costumes with animals. For sure. So it was great. And I think they raised so far $5,000 for the rescue. So, oh, that's so awesome. Really nice. Good, good. Mm hmm all right, what are we looking at, Alex? Well, that's Gibbon. And, and I'm not allowed near Gibbon food. <laughs> They're so mean to me, Maya. So apparently because some of the Gibbons, they were, ha they were hand reared rescues uh -huh. when they were very small. They don't sort of behave when I'm around after and they don't want to go inside when they're supposed to when me and Joanne who hand reared them are around. Uh -huh. So I'm not allowed to see my own animals at a few points a day. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
Right, so you're saying... Uh... I was thinking Boris. We can't... All right, and then John and Lima. We have a hard time hearing Alex, Pardon? but we can hear you just fine. Okay. I f I'm not sure I can do anything about that. It's because the heads, but I can... Yeah, that's sort of... fine. If you can just relay yeah. to us, that's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Boris the Red Rough Lemur, we're going to first. He's a special rescue... Excuse me. <laughs> He's a special rescue case. Uh, he has like a twisted bag. You might have seen him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dog inside. Cool. <laughs> do we want to go for that first? Yeah. I see. That's the first. I sang this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going. Yeah, if you guys see a bit of a messy rescue, so it's because we're opening up for public 28 in this month. Oh, so everybody wow. is working. That's very exciting. So hard. That, that must yeah, be it's tough exciting. for you guys to, to lose in ticket sales like that for so long. Yeah, we have, I think it's seven months out of the year where we have no income. Jesus Christ, it's raining. Ah. Oh, Do we no. have an umbrella? I haven't taken all the umbrellas. Okay, we got to run. Um, okay, let's see if we can hurry up. Ooh, look, a rainbow. You guys are in for a treat in a second. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, what was I saying? Holy cow. Right? A double rainbow. That's a good one. Oh, wow. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, the thing that's going to be hard for us besides that, you know, seven months out of the year, we have no income. And that's why, you know, a sort of the stream and everything related to that is a good idea. So we can keep sort of showing and talking and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, our big issue is going to be now that we, the government has said that we cannot let any people in without a fresh uh, non-positive test of COVID. Wow. And it needs to be 48 uh, hours old. So we don't, we have no idea how that's going to affect us. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> With Ellie. So where are we headed right How now? How does it work? So right now we are heading into a lemur house. Okay. How is it working with the delay? Is it distracting, guys? <laughs> Not at all. Honestly, I don't, I don't, it's like barely noticeable. Danny, thank you for the $28. Oh. And Leonard with $20. Oh, I said that one. So we're at six hundred and eleven dollars now. Six hundred and eleven dollars so far. Oh, there's a ringtail. How cute! And these are also rescues, I believe, from a zoo where they were supposed to be put down again because of what was it? Excuse me. And why was it that they were supposed to be put down? <laughs> I mean the one from Holland. Yeah, the, the initial one. They were on their own and they yeah, didn't have time to put them together. To group. Oh, now I understand. Sorry. Yeah. So if you guys, I, I was confused there. <laughs> you guys are the, uh, confused as well. I don't blame you. The, the the thing that Alex was saying were that some bigger zoos uh, in Holland apparently had a lot of them sitting alone and did not want to spend the resource or have the time to put them together mm -hmm. and that's why we were asked if we could uh, if we still could do it okay so again many different rescue stories it can be all from really horrible fur farm or in this case this guy here boris you can see the twisted back mm -hmm. who gets like masseuse therapies coming and uh, and helping him and you know just He's a very special and spoiled boy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's great, though, that you guys are able to do that. He wants to... He's so used to getting the treatment, so he would just come here and lay in front of me. He's like, I'm ready. <laughs> That's <laughs> sweet. Do you have any idea how old this Boris is? Very old, actually. He's been here for 15 years, and when he came here, he was, he was not young. Wow. Like, so he... He was an adult, like, like, I think, what is it, like, 20 years, 17, 20 years in captivity, yeah. they usually get? That's impressive. Um, Crash yeah. tipped $15. Thank you, Crash. Boris. So, yeah, obviously, he gets a lot of extra, extra care because he's old and he's a rescue and he has the twisted back and sort of, 
our our only thing about taking in animals that has been through a lot is that they need to have a high living standard. It's it's it, it's about they're not in pain. It's about that we can actually rehabilitate them and give them a few good years left. Um, and in this case, many good years left. We we thought he was maybe only gonna have a few good because he was a doll when he got here. But here we are, 15 years later. <laughs> Right. Apparently, masseuse therapy uh, lemur helps. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Can you tell people what lemurs eat, like what your diet looks like for them? So, if if they could choose, it would be all fruit, right. yeah. <laughs> all all sugar rush. But the way that we do it is that in the morning we give them fruit to sort of wake up, get their blood sugar going, and then in the afternoon it's a lot more veggies and and pasta. Not not too much because it can be fattening, but a little bit of. Uh, well, you can see it here in a second. What bars is getting? Oh, they're cool. Spoiled boy. <laughs> uh, Loop tipped a hundred dollars and DL tipped ten dollars. Oh wow! Thank you. Hundred dollars, ten dollars. Oh. So we are on what seven, eight hundred now? Seven hundred and thirty-six. Yes. Seven hundred and thirty-six. Incredibly generous uh, community you have, Maya. Yes, no kidding. If if, if you haven't noticed, like <laughs> congratulations again for what you guys did. That was insane. Thank you. <laughs> um, a couple. More questions have come through. So one person asked, uh, which of your animals is the most difficult to care for? Which of our animals is the most difficult? I mean, since they're all exotic animals, I would say that they are all difficult in, in their own way. Like if they don't get the right vitamins or the right lighting or the right food or, you know, they're not going to have a... They're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> um, so, I, but but I think maybe all the smaller tamarins from South America, they like if you don't know exactly what you're doing, they are, they, they just die the first night. Mm -hmm. You know, being a little over dramatic here, but that's what we see a lot in 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 a lot of zoos where they, you know, the fur is looking like very mad and very dark and very dull, and they're not getting enough vitamins or the right proteins or the right anything. So so I think. Primarily all the primates, because you need to not only create the artificial, you know, enclosures, but also all of the food and lighting and vitamins and all that stuff. So I, I think that's going to be my best answer to that. Got it. Um, and then another person asked, Cosmic tip, $10, thank you. Um, another person asked, uh, what is the biggest animal that you care for at the zoo? So right now that's going to be Anton, our Bactrian camel. Yes. Very cool. He's a big boy. How big is he now? Yeah, 600 kilos. And he's still a baby. <laughs> oh, wow. What was it in here, Alex? All girls, all boys? So... Yeah, a little bit of her cheek. That's from why they get put together. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of an issue with, with the ringtail lemurs because uh, they, they tend to kick some of the other members out of the groups. It's only it's female dominant lemurs. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, we have a few projects. We are building, I think now, five different lemur groups, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and we do have them in breeding programs because it, you know it's endangered animal that we are working in, in these global breeding programs. Oh, that's great. So we have sort of... Yeah, so, so besides the rescue, and you could say that besides mixing and matching rescue and normal zoo animals, the reason why we still a in quotes, a zoo is because we are in these international breeding programs with all the rare species. Um, like lemurs or lion-headed tamarins, which are amazing. But yeah, they kick all the young boys out, so we need to create bachelor groups. <laughs> Aww. That's too bad. Half tipped a hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Yeah, so is the space that we're in right now, because you're looking at the window there, do they go out there during yeah. the day or when it's not raining? Or Yeah, so uh, indoor enclosure here, just to seek shelter and mm -hmm. heat and all. 
an uh, an outdoor enclosure here, and Boris can also free roam together with them. Okay. But he gets his own house because you know he is a rescue and he can get bullied a bit, mm-hmm. but he can then sort of retreat to his own area. Got it. People keep asking about yeah. Zabumafu. Zabumafu was a lemur, but not one of the lemurs that we've seen so far. I forget what kind of lemur Zabumafu is. Um, From Madagascar. Yeah. From the movie. No, Wasn't, Z- I think Zabumafu one of them was. What was it, like a TV show? Oh, Simpuka? Or what did you say? Zabumafu. Zabumafu. I never heard of that. Sifaka lemur is what Zabumafu is. There you go. I've never heard of that. Maybe I've seen it. Some... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a. American TV show or? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I didn't okay. really watch it. I just remember that it was for kids and it was it was a, a lemur. They're so cool. Do we want to continue over to Java Monkeys? Maybe it's not raining. And it's so cool that the lemurs don't have any natural enemies, so like the behavior is also is in many cases very calm. Mm-hmm. It's very unusual. I feel like I'm educating a community that knows all the facts. No, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Give, give as many facts as you'd like. Uh, we have other questions that have come through. Hmm. Um, Remy asked, how much focus do they have to put into controlling the climates for all the animals from different parts of the world? Um, well, well, it depends because like, obviously if we're talking reptiles and stuff, it needs to be, you know, more than spot on because reptiles are so sensitive. But when, when you are talking these kind of animals, like for instance, if we take the camel, the back train camel, mm-hmm. um, they actually adapt to, to our weather. So he will shed, he will like get a thick fur in the winter time mm-hmm. and he will spread it when it becomes summer. But like in general, the indoor houses just need to be good and heated. You can say they right. need to be hot. They need to to be isolated, and then they can sort of. Some of the animals don't go out at all in the winter time, but uh, I mean, if we're not talk, talking reptiles, the, the animals will adapt in many cases. Got it. Uh, Concept twenty-seven dollars. Thank you. So we're Thank on you. our way to Java monkeys now. Is that right? Yeah, so we are going to actually the biggest res- rescue project in the rescue zoo's history. We took in 18 Java monkeys who were rescued from the was medical industry, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and here we are talking like, you know, hooked up to medicine all day long. Right. Really horrible stuff. So but they're doing good now and they're re- it's really cool. All female group. Oh, I don't know how long we are on the stream. Do you guys remember last time? I think I think that's what we talked about that we had to come back and show you guys the otter enclosure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, well, we still we're missing the mountain stuff because of yeah COVID and and all that stuff obviously hit us so much in the last time we spoke. But indoor enclosure completely finished and water mm-hmm. area and everything here is finished. It just needs to be sort of decorated, you can say. Cool. And now we can have the otters in. Uh, out all year round. So That's awesome. Go in and out. And what, what kind of otters oh, do yeah. you guys have? Uh, how does it, a, the small Asian other? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah, unfortunately, we can't show them right now because we have like this building where there's no connection where a lot of the animals is in for mm-hmm. the winter. Have I told you guys the last time about this greenhouse here? I don't remember. The story about that? So my dad here 20 years ago when they started, he pretty much built everything himself. And one day, <laughs> crazy man, when he was with us, he wanted a greenhouse. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't afford that. So he bought all the pieces and he built it alone by himself what we're looking at here. Oh my gosh. That's Isn't that crazy? Incredible! I cannot imagine doing something like, like that. Like literally, he 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 would have stuff like hanging up to be able to put the pilers up, or like just do whatever he could 
And, you know, he could do it professionally because he's been building the entire rescue. So, like, but, you know, normally what would it be? 20 people building on stuff like this? <laughs> yeah, at least. That's that's amazing. It's a huge structure. <laughs> so, it will also leave you kind of, how do you say, like, um, you need to follow in some some animal lover's footprints, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, no, I just thought it was a cool fact here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was amazing. See, Java monkey. <laughs> the Jato <laughs> tip twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Um, Aww. Gal, Gal asked the, how many acres is the zoo? I can do a conversion quickly um, if you want to tell me, whatever metric. Uh, yeah. How do you say that? No, yeah. <laughs> um, it's so acres. I believe it's, I believe it's fourteen. Okay. Something like that. Do you guys measure in hectares or square? Um, I think. So I might be mistaken. It might be that four hectares, uh, one hectare is four of our measurement. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So we need to do it backwards. So our measurement is four, and one hectare is four of ours. <laughs> so what's your measurement? I'll type it in because I'm at my computer. <laughs> um, honestly, I think I only have a Danish. It's called Turnalet. Do we have any Danes in chat that can <laughs> that can uh, translate that? <laughs> it's a big zoo. <laughs> it's just, it's just leave it yeah, the zoo is currently big. They have six hundred <laughs> animals. They're over six hundred animals. So yeah, it's and big. we're currently trying. I don't know where we are on stream right now, but can you guys see out in the distance like a wind windmill out there? Um, like far, far out. Maybe they don't oh. know. If you're Yes. Expert, thank you for the Kinda? $20. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, my point was just that's where we are extending it to. We are working on getting that next piece of so we can continue our growth. Oh, great. But, I mean, what, right now what we're doing is just to... We want to get... So, since you're a rescue facility, I think we talked about this last time. You, you said something like you liked our enclosures and all, but as you know, in rescue facility, it's not about making these golden roads and stuff. But, you know, obviously we want to just keep our standards as high as possible. So, we're basically taking everything you have built and then we're renovating it from A to Z and then, you know, continuing to expand. Right. All right. How much is the rate? Is it like 10 seconds or 2 or 5? I think it's less. I mean, it's less than 10, I think. But I haven't. Less than 10. It's hard to tell. Chat, okay. I don't know what you think. Yeah, maybe huh. even less than Let five. Just... 3 to 5 second delay. It's not bad at all. Yeah, okay. I just want to show you guys quickly before we go here. See these two. Oh no, now they jumped down. Just Luna and Nato are just both sitting patiently away. <laughs> the links. Oh, there they are. How cool. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> right. Somebody saw us. Also, Carmel asked, lemurs are not natural in Denmark, right? No. Right. <laughs> they only they only live in Madagascar. That's why I said... Uh, sure. Yes. Alex is leaving us. I don't know why. Sorry for a sec. For That's okay. Uh, what was I saying? Um, so, sometimes people get a bit confused in regards to that... Um, you know, that our location is in Denmark. It doesn't mean that the animals are sort of native to, to Denmark when we say exotic animals in Denmark. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of confusion now and then. Could you leave a key, Alex? See, they also don't want, to, want me to have keys. They say I lose them. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. They're so strict to me. You, 
you're going to feel the same, Maya, when you get passionate people working with the animals. They, yeah. They're going to tell you off, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. No, I think it was because we have a green green monkey sitting here next to that is going to get a lady's elf, I believe. Hi, buddy. And he gets so jealous if he doesn't get his food first that he will just sit here and yell at everybody else. Oh. So that's why Alex like, oh, damn. <laughs> he's never gonna... He's never gonna get over that. And we're not gonna get peace to to feed and talk about the jamas. Right. We'll end him obviously if he doesn't get it first. Do you know about animals with a lot of personality, Maya? <laughs> yeah, and primates especially. Green, thank you for the fifty dollar donation. That we are very close to our thousand dollar goal now. We're at nine hundred and seventy three dollars. Holy moly! Ugh. You have? Did you say the only thing I'm? Go ahead. Sorry. No, it's just sad that you guys couldn't hear all of them talking. That was the only thing I was saying. Oh. Um, did you say it's 14 of these that you rescued? Uh, 18. 18. 18. Wow. Yeah. And and we took only female because it would give like a more say, stable dynamic in the group than if, you know, animals, first of all, that's been through abuse who don't have any natural behavior left and you know, are unpredictable, we would just have endless fighting if, if they were only, if, if it were not only one gender. Mm -hmm. Hey, Alex. Chat, if you guys have any questions about these monkeys, you can do a hashtag ask and then your question. Yeah, anything. It's... Zeal it's, it's hard. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying it, it's hard to know what people want to know, especially when we do it every day. You know, we can't go into a complete uh, uh, speech mode or a normal conversation. It's always hard to see what people are into today. Mm -hmm. um, right. Zeal asked uh, if the monkeys fight a lot. Um, so, no, because we, we keep it as said only female, it tends to work out better, but like one of the things that we need to be extremely careful about is uh, when doing enrichment. And enrichment is for physically and mentally stimulating the animals, especially in captivity. And when we are working with animals that have been through so much, you need to be so careful. Like the most primitive I enrichment could start a chain reaction and fight in the entire group. So. We actually don't do much, en much enrichment with these girls because what we see is they start fighting instantly. Right. But we can do branches now, Alex is saying, without any problem, where like they get big branches with leaves on so they can all sit like, you know, groups on the hillsides and, and chew on them. Cool. Right? Do you want to see, uh, I don't know, Alex going to do a little trick. We do like a slow clap thing. And when Alex does the slow club thing, all of them are, they know now it's time to go out and wait for food. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you go ahead. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> right? <Very cool. laughs> and, and, only positive reinforcement because like if, if they just don't want to do it then maybe just come again like five minutes later so they they are the one have to wait like you never you never sort of uh, you know do anything towards them as a punishment they so just know oh well there's no food when you know when we don't do it right i mean that sounded harsh but but not like that but you know what i mean yes no we understand <laughs> uh food for tip 15 dollars james tip five dollars thank you um, people, oh, lots of questions, more questions. Um, hmm. so Lado asked if you're planning on releasing them in a natural environment. So in, in regards to releasing the animals, well, this is going to be the most uh, natural environment for them. So these guys have been sitting many, many years in small confined laboratory spaces and 
there is they would not know how to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. They only have a few good years left, and that's also why we're working more as a uh, uh, retirement home in, instead. Older animals have been through a lot, uh, and and secondly, there there needs to be a place to actually put them out. You know, like it, it's just keeping up with actually rescuing the animals, rehabilitating, and getting them out of situations. Like we wish we could do more, but it's it's simply not possible. Maybe in the future, in regards to like breeding programs and rare species, when we have a billion, <laughs> a billion dollars, uh, you could maybe buy up land somewhere. But but with rescue animals that are old, you cannot release them again. Right. Uh, Rodney, thank you for the seven dollars. Rodney got us to our one thousand dollar donation goal. Thank you so much. Um, oh wow. Lots of other questions about monkeys. A lot of people are asking what they eat. So uh, I would say it's pretty much the same diet, right, Alex, as uh, as the lemurs in regards to fruit in the morning and fruit and vitamins in the morning and what are you saying? And veg at night. Nice. Sorry? Chest. Yeah. Okay. So they don't get too excited? Yeah. Oh yeah. So like Alex is saying, because they've been through what they've been through, to, to help them with the dietary um, sort of uh, issues that they that they had from, you know, being tested on, mm-hmm. we don't just give them a lot of sugar in the morning through fruit. They also get veg in the morning to okay. sort of help that. Got it. Earth, thank you for the $15 and monkey with the $5. Um, some people have also asked if they ever try to escape from their enclosures. Uh, no, they, uh, they tend to be, you know, again, a little scared. And I think this is going back to uh, what we talked about in the start with that. Sometimes we think bigger is better in enclosure. Like if your entire world is, is such a small space that you couldn't even move, they would sometimes tend to just run back into it because that's what they know. Mm-hmm. So they don't really try to just go for the hills, even if they had the chance. Right. And then another person asked about their lifespan. The lifespan, Alex, remember? Alex is saying 2025. 20, I can't wait to melt you guys hard with the fur thumb foxes. <laughs> they are so cute. And we just we love all our primates. Like Joanne, the zoo director, my mother, she is in love with helping all of these primates. So that's why sometimes people think it's just a monkey rescue. Because oh, there's yeah. eighty eighty primates <laughs> rescued wow. so far here. I'm gonna have that issue with birds too. I, I'm acquiring <laughs> a lot of birds, not a lot of mammals. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I've seen something about bird, bird, bird lady, bird. What was bird, it that you were called, Maya? Bird girl. <laughs> yeah. Bird girl. <laughs> Is that a name you're trying to? No, get I didn't create that. that. People Why? just call me that sometimes. No, I just mean, are you trying to? Is that a name you're you're trying to get rid of, or going into somewhere else? Are you trans transforming into something else? <laughs> no, not necessarily. I don't really <laughs> mind it. It's it's not so bad. They're getting impatient now. <laughs> Purple Martin Conservation. Today. Hello. Purple Martin Conservation says that they like the Mohawks. I also like the Mohawks. That's pretty cute. Yeah. <laughs> They're located in Denmark, Chad. If you're just showing up, we're talking to Nico from Play Rescue Zoo. Um, they have over 600 rescue animals, and we're getting a little bit of a tour right now with one of their keepers. Um, in with the Java monkeys right now, and all your donations are going straight to uh, straight to this zoo today. Um, if you'd like to donate, if you'd like to see their socials, you can do command org or command guest. Uh, they have a Twitch channel, and then all the other socials you'll you'll be able to find them on. Yep. <laughs> oh, they're getting so impatient, Alex. You're like the slowest keeper they think right now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody also asked if, if they have names. Are you able to keep track of them like that? Or do you so, have names? 
So we, how can you say, we, we tend to only use names if it's animals where we are telling a story. Like, for instance, we, so one of the things we try so hard not to, to do, especially on, on Twitch, is not to make the animals look like pets. Right. And if it's like a cutie pucci, something, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, then it, it just gives the wrong picture and you're sitting there and petting them and all that stuff. So, so we do sometimes like Nula, Luna and Nela, who I believe already had names when they came here and we, you know, are telling the story and, you know, reasons why, you know, we need help or why you shouldn't do this and that. Then it sort of helps in telling the stories. Mm -hmm. And I believe also maybe sometimes the keepers tend to secretly have some names so they can look them apart. Right. <laughs> But, you know, in general, general rule is we don't sort of name them, if it makes sense. Yep, makes sense. Okay, right, you ready? Ready. Right, chat ready for a feast here? <laughs> Ruba tip $50. Right. Thank you so much. And Floppy tip two hundred dollars. Thank you, Floppy. Thank you so much. Jack asked if monkeys eat fruit or do they eat meat or just fruit? I think we talked about that a little bit earlier, but if he just showed up. Oh yeah. Um so yeah, veggies and they they also do it, uh, eat proteins and stuff, uh, you know, like worms or, or, or stuff like that. So veggies and fruit and, and protein. Something, oh, sorry, couldn't hear what you said. Me? Yeah. The diet is, can change throughout the week to make sure that they all, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, did chat, was it like half a sentence for you guys? <laughs> yeah, no, we weren't able to hear Alex at all. Okay. Um, basically, Alex was just saying, like, that they are all on special diets, and it might change on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on what the specific animal needs. All right. So cool. Okay, um... I think should we, uh, we can start by going down to the fur farm foxes now, and then we can continue to see if if there are some specific stories we should tell and what we should show about the rescue zoo or what we do and all that stuff. Okay, sounds good. All right. I don't think you guys can hear. They are all like talking and. <laughs> no, we can't hear. So anyone, loud. I don't think. Aw. Uh, all right. Here, Max, thank you for the two dollars. You know what? Over here, let's see. There's a label that us. So, we do like to have the rescue zoo as being sort of a nature park and natural sort of enclosures and, and natural um, building. What do you say? Uh, materials, and stuff. but unfortunately. It doesn't last very long, and and not in in an environment where there's you know hard winters and summers and rain and and all that stuff. So we uh, are starting to renovate everything, and we recently this week actually have built we tear down all of the old wooden enclosures mm -hmm. and are just starting from an end. And because you know simply it looks good for a year, and then it just starts to fall apart, unfortunately. Right. So as you can see here, new gibbon enclosures are being built. Wow. To, uh, to sort of, uh, you know, we wish we could have the other style all the time, but it's just a lot more sustainable for us, and it just, it lasts. Right. No, that makes sense. It looks great, though. Yeah, right? That's awesome. And the one here in the end. So this is going to be all the way around. Cool. And that's for Gibbons? Is that what you said? Yeah, we, yeah, Gibbons all around here cool. uh, they're all sitting in inside right now very impatient for us we've been building it for a week right now so need to hurry up 
Dyro, thank you for the $20. And Lucas with $10. We're at $1,300 now. No, I could imagine my. Now you're looking at enclosures like with different eyes. Uh, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I was just thinking about that. Right? So, yeah, one word if you can. <laughs> they might be less natural in, in the sense, but it just lasts so much more. Right. Um, right, let's see if we can uh, go down. Carlos is still out. Nice. Carlos, our Gibbon. So, back in the day, we had a, 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 a mother. Oh, sorry, I got confused with Alex driving behind me here. We had a female a Gibbon who got a breast infection uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And because a Gibbon is, you know, a such a close related species to us, you can't really do anything else than actually take them in and hand rear them because they are like a child and you're just going to lay down and die if you don't give them nurture and warmth and contact and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. Carlos here, he was hand reared because of that. You soon get it. I see. You're going to try to... <laughs> You're going to try to steal it. But he has yogurt all over his face. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Gibbons are so Don't cool. steal it. Right? Love Gibbons. So much personality, but so big tricksters. Yes. Like, that's the thing. When you look at them, you can see that they are trying to... They're looking back at you, figuring you out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Kakio took Where a lot of the other. Thank you. Nice. And yeah, every single penny counts because, you know, as, as Maya said at the start, it costs 40 grand just to feed the 600 animals just a month. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that's why I'm looking somewhere else <laughs> to find new ways to, to just keep being able to do what we do, to keep feeding the 600 animals and showing you guys the daily lives here on, on Twitch is, is one of the ways and the gaming and YouTube and everything. And I wish there were more hours in a day. Yeah, me too. <laughs> do you feel like you get now, especially with the new projects, Mike, do you feel like you get done what what you what you wanna get done in these days, like both content and um, you know, expanding? Yeah, I do I do okay with still being able to to keep up with my stream. That may be a different story once I'm really developing the facility, you know. <laughs> but but we'll see. <laughs> I'm definitely more busy than I've ever been, but it's it's fine. Milky, thank you for the $7. Yeah, Arbiter, thank you for the $10. Definitely a lifestyle. Definitely a lifestyle. Like, sure. my mother has not had a vacation in 20 years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Maya, good luck. I am <laughs> Thank <so> you. <laughs> <laughs> it is wonderful, and it is one of the hardest things in the world. Mm -hmm. And. the... Uh, I assume it's Danish crowns. So right. No, uh, 40k USD a month. 40, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's about 300,000 Danish, I believe. Alright. So please, again, don't mind the mess around here. <laughs> it's just, I don't like showing the rescue zoo uh, behind, behind the scenes here. It is what the zookeeper is, an organized zookeeper area. <laughs> it is a little... Uh, it is what it is. But uh, now we are going down to the rescue foxes. And uh, they are currently in quarantine area. So I'm going to try not to fall in the water here. I did not think this through. I have white shoes on right now. And oh, I no. have a rescue so I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Why do you have white <laughs> shoes? Oh my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> well, white, white shoes is also a stretch. I would say, if you look at them. Oh. But they definitely were at some point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Oh, so. <laughs> I mean, they were. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can get in here. So. I'm sick. So. All animals coming into the rescue zoo needs to get into quarantine area, mm -hmm. and especially to do with not, you know, bringing sickness to all the other animals. Here, we have the quarantine area for the rescue fox. 
Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> we just, it just turned the camera, they're so cool. Corgi, thank you for the $15. So incredibly cute. They're so cute. See. Alex, could you come and help uh, open up? So yeah, just some people who are not thinking anything. So these guys were rescued from a fur farm. It is becoming illegal to have foxes for fur in Denmark, and we managed to save some of them and have them sort of for ambassadors to, to show people why they shouldn't support you know, buying fur and all. And uh, and that this is not the final enclosure. This is quarantine area. These guys have been living under so small confined spaces that they have actually never used their legs before when they came here. So besides not spreading sickness to all the other animals and being quarantined, it's just a very good thing for them to take it in slow steps so they don't get overstimulated or die from stress or anything like that. Yeah. And you have four of them? No. Uh, Initially, three, but right? well, we have three. Yeah. Got it. And uh, what you see here is how six hundred animals poop look like. Oh boy. <laughs> oh yes. King D asked, "How do they keep their coats so clean?" Uh, I think that might just be a. How the the camera? Oh, <laughs> not that I would say it's clean. <laughs> and then virtual said, "Are they normally that fluffy, or were they bred to be that way?" Yeah, that's a very very good question. So, first of all, it's very hard to say what kind of species they are because you know they've basically been been bred into ten different kinds to make that per perfect fluffy mm -hmm. uh, uh, fur. But but yeah, I would say I would say it mostly because they're so fat. They have been you know overfit, over overfit, right? And and sitting in small confined space until they had the right size. They were only six months old, uh, and so big here. Mm -hmm. This big guy. We are so excited. We we saw that they have now been. Uh, Digging out the entire area for the new enclosure, they're gonna. Yeah. Gonna be so fun to see them free roam in that. For sure. Somebody said, uh, Pyro asked, "Are their tails curled like that because of being in enclosed spaces, or is that natural?" Yeah, that is because of oh, that is because of the space. They they tend to be able to actually move it now more or less and and control it a bit but we do believe it's because of that but we did check to see if there were anything broken or anything there were enough to see it, it might just be sort of they they haven't really you know trained that muscle you could say mm -hmm. because they've been laying there over the fence but it you That's have seen crazy. them like stretch it out hi but yeah you can see how i think you guys could get a chance to see like how fat they really are mm -hmm. they are also dieting everybody <laughs> And then, yeah, we wish we could take all all 3,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be something. You know feeling? <laughs> um, See, that's the dangerous thing when you start rescuing, that you want to take them all. Right. <laughs> Rai asked, what are their personalities like? Uh, what are fox-like tendencies? Um, I think you could kind of call them that if you took a, 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 a cat and put it inside of a dog... That's a like fair... kind of how the personality. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and also for them here, some of them are more curious. Some of them are more like butt bumpers. They like go around and like butt their butt bumps. Uh, sorry, butts to like push the, each other away, mm -hmm. like in a in a in a not a very aggressive way, but like still a dominance dominance kind of way. So that's sort of some of them are pushing each other around. Other them are super curious, and one of them is very shy. Okay. Um, One of them always want to steal. This guy always want to steal my shoes, though. Uh -oh. oh, you gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and then Finn asked, "What do they eat?" Um, I think right now it's the it, well, it's 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 you know protein, so it's it's meat and all, but. I don't know if it's what. What are they eating? 
Various dark biscuits and meat, and what do you say? Various meats, dark biscuits, and berries. Got it. Okay, so a little bit of fruit. Gold fit to Only $100. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Someone asked if there are arctic foxes, so Nico said a little bit earlier that it's really hard to, to say what kind of foxes these are because they're from a fur farm, um, so they've just been like bred and bred and bred um, into something that'll yeah. have really fluffy coats, um, so they're not a, not a true species. I think it would be impossible to really tell what kind mm -hmm. they are at this point. Wow, I can't believe those There's tails. Little bit that's, that's crazy. You can see... You can see how they are able to control them, some of them, and, and some of them is all curled up, but sometimes we see they push them all out, so... Mm -hmm. Jeez. Fick asked how long you've had them at the... at the zoo. Uh, a few... a few months now. They, they initially were supposed to be in quarantine for the first eight weeks, but... Uh, because it got uh, we got into winter, so it was frozen ground. We couldn't dig up the enclosure because <laughs> fox enclosure needs to be secured like crazy because they're gonna dig their way out else. See, a couple of months they've been here. <laughs> Look how good he's getting at his legs. Yeah, Quinn, thank you for the ten dollars. Uh, Quinn asked, "Is this zoo open to the public?" So the rescue zoo, uh, rescue zoo is opening up uh, again for the public here on the 28th uh, of March, and then we are closing again every winter at Holy Hollow uh, Week Vacation, I think. Is that what it's called? Uh, East Alex, what is it called? Easter Holidays. That's No, when are we closing? Autumn Holidays, that's what it's called. <laughs> Language barriers, man. No, <laughs> Sometimes funny. it's hard. We, we, know what you, we know what you mean. Um, hmm. This is a, maybe a good time to address uh, the, the pet thing and also maybe a little bit about the fur trade. Somebody said, OMG, what is that? I want it. <laughs> Do you want to talk oh, a little yeah, bit yeah. about why they don't? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Maya. This, this is up to you. But in, in right in the start, when, when we played the video, that was also very educational. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people like uh, got ads, so we're not in here yet because it was early. I don't know. Do you want to to some of the new people play again? I just want me to explain it all. Um, you can explain it. How about I play it without the audio, and then you can talk over it. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, so, so then we're still watching some of the. Yeah. Some of what we're doing live. Right, I'll just have it so they'll be able to see me in this video and then you can... Through the years, you have helped... talk about it, but just uh, so they so, have more of a vision. So they, so they can't see the RTMP server, right? right? Correct. Okay. Hi. So right now it's on a picture of, I guess, if this is them in their transport cages. Yeah, you know what? Can you wait a second with with, with starting it? Because what we're gonna do then is um, I'm gonna go out and put the camera here in one of the sides, and then I'll just go in and sit in front of the the better speaker, and then we can still cut out to see the foxes if we want to see them and talk about them again. Okay. Hi. Hi. It's such a nice thing to see how they're sort of. You know, they're changing our personalities from, from as you can see, the first pictures of sitting in the small cages and then actually see them, you know, getting their own personality is becoming happy for life and, and not just seeing that every single human is going to do something mean to them. And it's so nice to see. Sometimes you never think that the animals are going to get back to a, a normal state. So you will be I, We are surprised sometimes to see that they actually can recover. Mm -hmm. Uh, to some degree. <laughs> it's too big of an area to run in fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to run. No, it was cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. You did have to run. <laughs> No, I just feel like if we were to talk a bit and explain, it was just better to yeah, sure. have a better mic. 
Hi, Ayo. Are you sitting and pooping on my light? Yes, you are. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. We're at $1,463, chat. Thank you for your donations today. Um, they're, they're going to support animals like the ones that uh, you're seeing on screen right now. But there are 600 more <laughs> that they're going to support. So, appreciate oh, yes. it. Yes. All right, let me jump. But it's blocking. No, no, no. Could you at least poop outside the laptop? Oh, oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Wrong way. My chat was like creating an, like a, how do you say, like, they were inventing a new thing to take the poop on the other side of screens. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mass thing for the $50? Alright, I'm just gonna jump over on the computer. Okay, sounds good. And Zara, thank you for the fifty dollars. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Nice. Right. Are you? That is so mean. No, I just feel like if we were doing a bit of uh, talking again, maybe also uh, it will people get to know me a little better if they can actually see me talk about the animals. No. Right. Um. Yeah, Locke, you can take that off. Where his camera's back on. All right, sweet. We can see you. We can hear you. Perfect. Nice. All right. You want me to just do like an introduction again a bit and then we can go into whatever we want to talk about? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. So for the lovely people who are joining in now, my name is Nico and uh, well, we've been outside in our rescue zoo here. 20 years ago, my parents bought a zoo in Denmark and they converted it into a rescue zoo instead. So that means that we take animals in that had a hard life one way or another. And uh, whew, I'm still out of breath for what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that can be like animals coming from the medical industry or illegal pet trade or as we, are I don't know if we're seeing it right now, but we were seeing the fur farm foxes that recently came to the rescue zoo. Mm -hmm. um, I've been out on my own working as a game developer, but unfortunately lost my dad to cancer here a few years ago. So my mother was sort of alone with the rescue facility and 600 animals and uh, I've moved home again, and one of the ways that I'm helping out is that I'm live streaming our everyday lives with these 600 animals, and I am developing a game. So I thought I could use my skills as a game developer to see if I could, you know, help all the 600 animals in a different way. Um, I am sorry, one sec. She's biting on some electronics. Oh, yeah, take care of that. <laughs> Ayo. What is it with birds and just, it's only fun the things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> uh, that is so true. I, I think it's like, they, they get a reaction when they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So that's mm -hmm. what they do always. <laughs> There's also it's... a little bit of, if I'm not getting enough attention, right? Right. Then I'll just do this. <laughs> Salson, thank you for the $20. Um, great. Okay. So, and Wild, thank you for the $16. So let me play this video and we can talk a little bit about the foxes. Dan, to $50, thank you so much. So oh what, my they're, gosh. Thank you guys. what they're seeing on screen right now is um, one of the foxes in a transport cage. Um, and I'm gonna play the video so they can see me in this video right now if you wanna just start talking about the fox's story and about the fur farm that they came from. Uh, yeah, should I? Let me see if I can open up so I can see what's going on here. Hold on a sec, yeah. Right, so what you're looking at here is when initially the fur farm foxes came to the rescue zoo. Um, and you would think that these cages were horrendous to look at, and it's actually not the cages that they lived in at the, you know, at the fur farm. It was even smaller confined spaces, which is just... Like, everybody who's been watching the streams and hearing about them, they just, when they saw this for the first time, they, you know, you really couldn't comprehend how horrible it were. were. And again, why you just shouldn't. Right. Don't buy fur. Like, Lord, thank you for the do $109 donation. Appreciate that. Oh, it really... Yeah. Now, now I understand. I didn't read that. Fuzzcon. Oh, yeah. There you go. So, so they created this video. 
uh, and they have been having like I think it's a whole month, and they are trying to raise ten thousand dollars for the rescue zoo, and and it looks like it's gonna it, it's gonna happen. They I think it's five thousand now, and they still have until the twenty eighth. Um, I think they also just affected by you know not being able to meet in person, so they're doing everything online for a month long thing. That's awesome. But yeah, so so lovely that people have been 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 choosing us, and it's such a cool thing. Like we. Uh, yeah, we have just seen more and more people like yourself, Maya, trying to get the word out. And we're just seeing that it's the right thing to do, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, it doesn't, because we are not just a normal attraction or a normal zoo or whatever, uh, we are a, a rescue facility. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in Texas or you're sitting in Denmark or in Norway. If you get told and you see the work, you can still sort of support it, mm-hmm. but you just need to get it out there. And that's why Twitch is such an amazing place to do that. For and, sure. Roddy, thank you for the $50 and um, vet with $20. Appreciate that. So we're at $1,829. Chat, I'll open it up to you guys for, for some closing questions here. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody asked if the foxes are male and female. I should have asked that when you were out there with them. But... Oh, sorry. I was just flying around, around me. That's okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, I think we have uh, two females and one male. Got it. But we are not we are not breeding on them uh, because obviously it's not an endangered species. It's a you know fair farm fox. So but we are uh, yeah we were making sure that they they can't breed because they, they most likely would not even survive mm-hmm. because they are not meant to be breeding at this point. If it will, it sounds horrible, but like their genes are just so fudged up so they they can't right. simply yeah. Um, uh, and then, then they wouldn't have anything to do with rescue. And again, what people are looking at is quarantine area, just FYI, again. Yeah. Um, oh, he's <laughs> taking the bowl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> only Jono, thank you for the $100. And Home, thank you for the $5. Um, home tipped a question, said... This is a long question. So what are the effects of captivity on most species? Can most adapt and thrive? I know some species don't do well. Uh, what is the general rule of thumb for captivity mindset? I There definitely isn't one, but Nico, if you have thoughts on that. Well, again, hard question and, and, and long, long answer maybe, but I think the best thing you can do if you want the animals to, to do well in captivity, it's all about enrichment. It's, it's about good enclosures and enrichment and, and making sure that they are stimulated physically and mentally because if you have an enclosure for, like if we're just talking normal zoo animals, for instance, if you have an enclosure that look the same for your entire life, that's why we see the stereotypical behavior because, you know, the animals don't get, there's no change in their lives. That's why they're getting crazy over time. Mm-hmm. So so I would say that the rule of, fu- rule of thumb to, to give them a good life. Like for instance, again, we here we're talking rescue animals with us, so it's a whole different game. The, the animal's behavior is not the same, but but in general captivity, it's about changing their everyday life uh, to, a, to a degree that it's, you know, good for the animal and not stressful, right. you know, but it's enough to not, so they don't get stereotypical behavior, yeah, I absolutely. would say. I think that's a great answer. Um, and then Finn asked, are there any animals at your zoo that can or will be released? Um, so, no, because our, our rescue facility works more of a a, um, a retirement home. It's older animals that have been through a lot of abuse. Like in this case, for instance, uh, we, we are looking at the fur farm foxes. These guys would not know how to take care of themselves, even though they're not that old, because like they are so mixed up in 15 inbred, uh, you know, chains of of genes so they would never be able to in any way or form but in general it's all the animals we have and we just think they deserve a good few years of left of their lives and 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 that's what we're doing yeah absolutely um and then a couple people have asked uh throughout the podcast but one person just asked again um if they're interested in getting into a career like like yours um how do you Mm -hmm. recommend they they go about doing that so the best way, um, first of all, don't be shy to to go out of your of your own country. Like for instance, I mean, I think it's different in in the states maybe because you guys have such a huge area. But for instance, when we're talking here in Denmark, we tend to only take people that first of all are educated, educated with exotic animals, 
but has been also volunteering around the world or working around the world specifically with rescue animals. So I think my, my, my best advice that I can give is that people, first of all, volunteer for a bit because it's so hard, at least in Denmark. I think we right now we don't take students in or apprenticeships, I think is that what we call it? Yep, or internships. Um, yeah, something like that. And I think it's, it, it would be one we took in every two years and we get around a hundred plus applicants sometimes a I week. Bet. Yeah. So to get, you know, um, volunteer is my point. Volunteer where you can, even if it's just cutting fruit somewhere, get your foot in the door, mm -hmm. but don't be pushy. Don't be, you know, I want to be a student at your place. That's not how it's going to get you in there. Right. right. Volunteering, right. cutting fruit, make yourself helpful, get your food, your, uh, get your foot in the door and then travel around, experience different things. That's where you're going to get sort of looked out from the crowd. Right. Chateau, thank you for the 33 Ninja with the 595. Um, don't be afraid to wash bowls. Yes, absolutely. I have the same advice as you do. I think um, definitely there, there are a lot of people that go in expecting to work with animals immediately. And that's, that is not the case. Um, so yeah, chopping no, no. fruit, washing bowls, doing dishes. Absolutely. This oh no, he's getting so cat. cute though. I can't, I can't, oh my god, oh, he wants the camera. Oh no. <laughs> if you see me run in a second, it's because he's stealing it. Okay. This is what I deal with on a daily basis on my stream. They're trying to steal, oh no, he got it. <laughs> oh, I need to call uh, one of the keepers for okay. a second. <laughs> uh, do you want to know? If anybody is watching right now, could you please go take out the camera? Because I know someone's watching. There you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Well, chat, you asked a ton of fantastic uh, questions. This is a great last question to ask you. Um, D North said, you mentioned you're developing a game. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how they can support it? Yeah. Um, so I'm developing a game called Rescue Wars Online. I can, can I give you, if you want to. Yeah. yeah I'll, something I'll give there. them the link. Yeah, unfortunately, I have not been able to. I'm I'm showing the game. Oh, I'm showing the game here on the 28th at that Foscon convention. So I haven't been able to develop Rescue Zoo and do the new website and all that. But that's coming this week. <laughs> so, but let me see here, Maya. Here you go. This this link here is for a new update uh, okay. video I just did. Here you go, chat. I'll spam this for you. Uh, the stream is called Play Rescue, like on the stream, guys, for them who are asking. Right, so the game is called Rescue Wars Online, and you are part of the rescue team, and you go on rescue missions, and you fight off evil, and then you rescue animals, and then you have a place where you are playing together with your friends, your streaming community. It's a bit special, the game, because the game might not really be released to public. It might be a streaming community game where it's like on demand i only turn the servers on when we are actually streaming and you need to be invited to be part of the game you can look at it like let's say we open up a minecraft private server but it's just our own game if it makes sense mm -hmm. uh, so we can play together all the stream have a character run around the stream can donate and do stuff and then things happens inside of the game <laughs> oh my gosh you can look inside of his mouth <laughs> oh thank you for the 20 dollars uh, okay, very but yeah, cool. think, think uh, World of Warcraft and Minecraft, and then it's community based on demand, so you can only play it if you are like on the stream. Very it's, cool. It's like... That's awesome. <laughs> this oh no, this one really wants to <laughs> Okay. Um. Well, Nico, thank you so much for your time. I also really, really appreciate this this closer look at the fur trade because it's something that we've kind of brought up before, but we've never gotten such an intimate look at it. Um, and I think that's been really, really powerful for um for the people watching today. Um, I hope this gives you guys a better idea of, of that industry, and it's it's really great to learn more about that. Um, so and look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> How could you wear him for fur? That is, he is like the cutest. It's crazy. He's so cute. They all are. Um, but thank you for setting up your backpack and for walking us around and for the tour and, and for all the information. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Maya, and thank you, Chad. Yeah, hope to see you guys for another tour in the rescue zoo. For sure, we're at two thousand and twenty-three dollars and seventy-two cents, and I oh will uh, DM you the final amount once uh, once I end the stream here. Yeah. Okay. Maya, thank you again so much. Of Take course, care. Of course. All right, I'll speak with you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chad. Okay.
that uh that was a great look um at the fur trade i'm i'm really really glad that you guys got to see it on that level philip thank you for the five dollars um those foxes are i mean it's so they're so like not natural looking if you're like because the closest thing that they look like to me is an arctic fox but if you look at an arctic fox versus the ones that we just looked at i mean look at the look at the inbreeding that's that's happened um is, isn't that crazy uh thomas thank you for the five dollars philip with the five dollars um, so anyway, that was super interesting and, and that was a really great podcast. I'm glad that we got to have Nico on again. Um, we are going to jump into the quiz here and I'm going to set it up while I'm talking to you guys. Give me a second to click around. Rise, thank you for the $3. Do, do, do. What'd you guys think? Good, good, I didn't study. Fun, cool, good, favorite guest. Good, great, good. I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, what'd you guys think about the time? <laughs> it's definitely a, definitely an earlier, earlier start. Amazing, very good, early, great, perfect. Well, of course, yeah, everybody that's here is gonna, is gonna say that, um, cause you're here. Again, if you want to get to those socials and, and support Play Rescue further, um, you can do Command Guest or Command Org. And uh, you'll, you'll have access to their Twitter, their Instagram, um, and their Twitch channel that way. We got another donation, Drux, with the $20. Thank you so much. I'm, a, I'm on break at work, so I get to watch this time. Hooray! Good. Okay, quiz is imported. Die on! <laughs> Dink donk. Um, okay, so the way that the quiz works, it's five questions. 20 seconds per question. It's just based on the conversation that I had with Nico today. Um, if you're watching, you'll probably know the answers to the questions. Um, do command. Do command quiz. Um, to, uh, to get a little bit more instruction on the quiz itself. Home, thank you for the $3. Yes, I know, that's on my Reddit. <laughs> um, I will look at it when I look at my Reddit. Uh, a little, 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 lip. Thank you. I will read the questions, uh, before you see them. Um, and the way that you get them, the way that you win the quiz, it's on a point system. So if you, uh, answer questions fast, the fastest and the most correct, then you could win the quiz potentially. So if you win the quiz, if you're not already subbed to my channel, you'll get gifted a sub to my channel. If you are subbed, you get a gifted sub to another channel or um, you can get, you can ask me to donate an additional $5 to uh, play our skew today, okay? Cool, here we go. Let me do, 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 do. All right, confirm, save quiz. Also make sure you click enable access. I know that the quiz, I know that the extension's a little bit scuffed, so it may show your name at the end. Don't start, don't stop participating in the quiz if uh, your name's not showing up because it'll probably show up at the end. Um, the first question is, uh, let me open this. Dang it, I downloaded it again for no reason. Go to start quiz, your quizzes. Okay, here we go. The first question is, uh, according to Maya, approximately how much does it cost a month to operate Play Rescue? Yeah, the website, uh, the quiz isn't run through the website, so if it's down, it's just the instructions that are down, but um, I think I've pretty much explained to you how it works. You'll see it pop up on your screen. It's, a, it's an extension through Twitch. So don't worry about the site. Um, just just use the extension on, on Twitch. Okay. According to my approximately, how much does it cost a month to operate Play Rescue in USD? 
Is it uh, 35K, 40K, 15K, or 20K? That's to feed 600 animals over 120 different species. 80 primates, I think is what he said. The correct answer is about 40,000 USD. Lots of people saying easy. Can I join OTK? Uh, that's not a question for me, but probably not. Uh, 197 people got that right. Well done. Um, the next question is, oh, I, I just said it, sorry. But approximately how many animals does play rescue uh, shelter or house have? Uh, is it 100, 400, 1,000, or about 600? These are approximate numbers, but... Lots of people saying easy. I forgot to show the results on the first one. I will show the results on the second one here. There are five questions total. Waiting for players. How many people got this right? The correct answer is 600. Spence wasn't listening, so he didn't get it. They fixed mobile. Uh-oh. That's too bad. Uh, the correct answer is 600. 307 people got that right. Good job. But who got it right the fastest? Fargaze. And then Squid in second. But Squid is in the lead with a fantastic score of 39,000. Um out of 40,000. Impressive. The third question is, how many months of the year does Play Rescue not have income? Is it five months? Seven months? 12 months out of the year? Or three months? Lots of people saying easy. Spinning Squid saying easy. Is he just psyching you out or does he actually know all the answers? Faster than anybody else. The correct answer is seven months out of the year. We're waiting for players here. 164 people got that right. That was a tough one. He did, uh, we, we, we really brushed over that. That was like a, <laughs> just a really quick part of the conversation. Um, Show scores. Contestant number. Okay, so 96 got that right the fastest, then Ivory, but Squid is still in the lead, followed by Ivory super closely, and then one cram is in third there. Um, okay, the next question is, what animal is the hardest to take care of, according to Nico? We talked about this when we were in that red roofed lemur enclosure. Is it lemurs, lynxes, tamarind monkeys, or java monkeys? 10 seconds to answer this question. Squid doesn't know. Does Ivory know? The Java monkeys are the 18 that we saw when she clapped and they, they went out. We didn't see any tamarind monkeys today, but he did talk about it while we were in the lemurs enclosure. The correct answer is tamarind monkeys. At 144 people got that right. Still the, still the most guesses on this one. Good job. No, minus 19 K. <laughs> Two monkey answers equals scam. Well, talk to Chuck. Fargay's got that right the fastest, then Levy. But Diggin' Dwarf, oh my gosh. They got absolutely destroyed. The guys in the lead got destroyed. Diggin' Dwarf was 77k. And then Tarchist in second, Warbur in third. Okay, the last question, if someone is thinking that they can pull ahead here, is what is the name of the biggest animal at Play Rescue? Not the species. What is the name of the biggest animal at Play Rescue? Is it Luna, Nala, Boris, or Anton? 
Dang, Chuck. <laughs> you could have just said what kind of animal was it and they could like use deductive reasoning. <laughs> answer <laughs> that's too easy the correct answer is anton anton is a camel um luna and nala are the lynxes and then boris is their red ruffed lemur um so 111 people now got anton right who's done it Drum roll, please. Chuck is cranky early, so that's why the quiz is <laughs> one cram. It, good job. A rancher, good job on that last question, though. Oh, and Topa, no way. One cram, congratulations, you've won the quiz this week. Holy moly, mo tip $20. Thank you for the $500 piece of plastic that looks like a child drew on it, the yo and the lovely note. <laughs> what? Is it the Pez dispenser? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> Holy moly mo, thank you. This is really cool, actually, I appreciate it. Look, they wouldn't let me send the used Ensure bottle, cause ew, so I just had Mitch write this note, and I was like, hey, can you write a note to this, to this guy, he's a fan, and this is all Mitch wrote, so I'm sorry that that's all you got, but um, I'm glad you like it. $500, all $500 worth of it. Um, okay, one gram, is he here? Only John, thank you for the $64 for being in 64th place. <laughs> Where is he? One cram? One cram, you subbed? He's a sub. Alright, NMP sub, you got it. Do, 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 do. Will we get something cool? Why not? Is it just one cram without yep. any the, um, you, it, underscores? It's in the eye of the beholder, and a lot of people are going to like... Yeah, cool. but will Nick get some? It's in, it's in the eye of me. Okay. I am right. the beholder. Okay. Okay. We think everything is cool. That's true. Here we go. Wishy-washy. Heder. Ooh, Alaran Persian. Popilo. Zubat. Shelder. Young Goose. Paris. Maybe they don't have alerts. Another Young Goose reverse. I get, and I did rare. It. I gifted. Oh my God! A Rodham Dex. One cram. Can you confirm? Golden Trainer card. Thank you. Thank you for the subs throughout the podcast too. I I saw them. Yes. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, okay. So, chat, that is it for the quiz today. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your donations. Oh, there it is. Oh, it, it popped up and then it went away. Um, good podcast. What's up, Play Rescue? Uh, appreciate it. Fireball tonight. Yeah. Has he told you what what is happening tonight? Besides, like, what has he said? Yeah, besides Seer. Oh my gosh. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you guys tonight. Um, no, he hasn't. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys tonight. Um, it is so dumb. <laughs> Whatever. I'll see, I'll see you guys tonight um, at uh, on Miz's stream. Um, we're going to fly Orion. Me and Miz both. Uh, he is not going to be thrilled about Is he sleeping? Hey, we got to fly. Gosh, he, he's so ready to molt. I'm so glad that, that uh, I'm putting him up to molt. He's like, his feathers are ready to go. Um, time? I don't know what, it's Miz's stream. I don't know. It's not my, I don't know. I don't know what time. Are you streaming the flight? No, I'm not. Um, Matt is coming out with me. Um, believe it or not, this is the first time he's ever seen me fly. I mean, he's, he's watched me do sessions in the backyard with like the lure when I was training. Orion on the lure and doing like perch to fist flights, but he's never come out with me to fly. So, um, he's, he's doing that with me today, so I'm not going to stream it. Um, but I will see you tonight. I will not be seeing you tomorrow, um, for housewives because, uh, Milena will be gone or out of town. 
so we have to push it. So no Housewives this weekend. Um, I will stream this weekend, though. Um, I, I don't know what I will do, but I, I'll stream this weekend. At this point, can we admit that I stream four times a week? Spider, thank you for the 128. Um, I made my first withdrawal from the Alveus account from, from the fundraiser that we did yesterday um, because I met my the fencing contractor and gave him a cashier's check uh, so he can start fencing the property on the 15th. Um, that's, and, and I, I have to pay 70% down on signing that contract, uh, so he can buy materials. So he's going to start on the 15th, um, with, uh, with his sons. They're, they're just, I think I told you guys this, they're going to camp out there and just live there and work. So they'll get it done pretty fast, which is cool. Um, but they're excited about it. They're bringing out like a barbecue pit and stuff. So Grace, well, thank you for the two months. Um, so that's starting very soon. I'm supposed to close on this pro I'm supposed to close on this property on the 13th. Um, but, or no, 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 no. Not the 13th, tomorrow's the 13th, on the 16th. I'm supposed to close on this property on the 16th. Um, and you know how it goes. I was also supposed to close on the 9th. Um, so we're, we're, we're hoping that, that That'll happen, but regardless, it doesn't really matter because I did get permission to start uh, construction on the property on the 15th anyway, regardless of if the close gets pushed again because I have a growing emu in my house um, and I need a pasture for when she's too big to be um, in my house. I'm weighing her today also. Uh, I am I think at this point she has doubled in size since I brought her home from the airport. Um, is that the ring? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bought a chain yesterday because I just could not put this back on my finger. I don't know. It feels like I feel like something else needed to happen with it and I didn't want to frame it or anything. So I bought a chain and now now it's here. Um, so it's fine. I actually kind of like it. It's a fun story. It's a fun conversation starter. Um, but it's also like a I, I like it. I like sentimental jewelry a lot. I've always been weird about that. So um, it's like a cool reminder of like the, the start of Alveus, you know? Um, so that's why I have a ring on my neck now. Um, 501c3 has not been approved yet. No. Um, so yeah, I won't, I won't be seeing you tomorrow for housewives, but I may be seeing you tomorrow for something else. If not, uh, Sunday and then I'll see you on Monday. Um, I already have the next podcast guest lined up. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. You know of them, but they've never been on the podcast before. So, It'd be cool. Maybe it'll be invisible once you put it on. Is that like some reference that I don't understand? Let's raid, uh, you said Big Man Outdoors is live, right? Yeah, let's raid him. Lord of the Rings, yeah, sorry. I've never watched those. <laughs> uh, Big Man Outdoors. Okay, here we go. Chat, sad. Big Man Outdoors is a great streamer. I love seeing people stream outside like him with high quality. Um, it is straight up the future. It's sick. Um, so go support him. He's a really just like good dude. Um, I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching the podcast. I feel like I'm missing things to say. I have updates for you, but I'll tell you on another stream because it's a podcast. Um... I think that's it. Thank you to my team for being up early. Um, Locke was up at four till 4 a.m. his time helping Miz with stuff, and then he got up for this stream to help me with the RTMP stuff. Um, I am so appreciative for all of them. Um, Chuck being up at 7 a.m. to do this quiz is amazing, too. Um, so I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, and thank you for watching the stream at an earlier time. I'm sorry because of Danish time. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. It's it's cool. It's it's uh, good to change it up a little bit. It gives some more more people the opportunity to watch. So I will see you guys either. To, I'll see you sometime this weekend, and I'll see you to my, tonight for Fireball Friday with Sierra. It's gonna be fun. It's been a while since we've done it, so I'm looking forward to that. But thanks, guys. Twitch is on top. Reservoir for doing good. We're not gonna be able to finish the intro. I forgot that I had to play the intro. So you saw part of it. Bye.